Hey everybody, Ryan McCaffrey with IGN. I'm joined by Ed Orman, and Ed, you're here to show me a game called Submerge. That's right. That's... I love the title. I, it's a. I'm already hooked just on the idea of the word Submerge, but uh, what, are, what are we in here for here? What's the... Uh, What's well, the elevator pitch? Well, so, so Submerge is an open-world exploration navigation game um, set in this obviously submerged city that you can see here, the yeah. half-submerged city. Um, and it's the focus for this is really on um, navigation and narrative. There's actually no combat in this game at all. There's no failure states, no death, none of that. Um, we just really wanted to make somewhere that was really beautiful and relaxing as a place for you to explore at your own pace. See, I like that because, and I'm, we're, I feel like this is a sort of subgenre that's starting to take off. And I, I wonder if it's sort of in response to just years and years of corridor shooting and mm -hmm. your Call of Duties and your this one and your that one. But um, the reason I like this approach, you know, a combat-free game is. Because your your story and your characters have to be good, mm -hmm. otherwise your game is sunk. Pardon yeah. the expression. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it's definitely it's totally a reaction to that kind of thing. Like yeah. we, we've been making first person shooters and mobile shooters for a long time, yeah. and I, much as I still love those games, uh, it was at the end of Epoch Two we were like, eh, let's try and do something different for once. Um, and so we had this. We had this sort of idea uh, based on a Grand Theft Auto mod that I saw where somebody flooded, they raised the sea level. Interesting. And once they did that, you know, I, I had this sort of freeze frame image of the city sticking up out of the water, and I was like, actually, that's a really peaceful idea. And then I had the thought of the girl in the boat, and that's that was it. That's what we well, built let's, from uh, there. Let's get started here. Okay. What are we? So, uh, who are we walking with, and who are, who are we carrying? So the game starts, as you saw in that intro, with uh, these two kids, Miku, the little girl, and Taku, her little brother. They arrive in the city and, you know, we're not telling you exactly how they got here or why they're here. And that's kind of the major major front thread, I guess, for this game mm -hmm. is unraveling uh, exactly what happened to them in their past to bring them to this point. And uh, you'll, you'll see in these sequences, every time you do something that uh, helps your brother, um, you'll get a little piece of her memories and her backstory. And so that'll fill in in... in um, these sort of comic sequences, which you'll see right here. So he appears to have been slashed by, uh, I would suspect, a large animal or maybe a human bearing a weapon, but mm -hmm. something, something, something. That's right. And is this are, is a lot of narrative told through these? Uh, these yeah, yeah, pictorials? that's right. Yep. So yeah, as I was saying, like every time you come back, you get one of these. There's also hidden objects because it's an open world exploration game. We wanted to hide, you know, lots of objects to sort of give people rewards for actually sure. searching. But each time you get one of those hidden objects, you get a piece of the story of the city, like what happened to oh, this okay. place. Interesting. What happened to the creatures? So reward here. for exploration. Yeah, yeah. Just enough, just enough to keep you driving, to keep you going. And so there's two major elements to the game um, for exploration and navigation. One is the boat. Okay. which you'll use this the city is about a square kilometer and it's completely open interesting um so your goal is to boat around and find the the big buildings that are in intact enough and haven't been overgrown enough that there might actually be some supplies left to, right. on them at the top um but yeah this is uh we wanted to build this really pretty place that you can just sort of take your time in and hang around and just avoid that <laughs> guy <laughs> <laughs> Mutated shark whale thing. Yeah, yeah, and again, that's that is actually that's part of the story. Um, exactly what happened to these guys and why the city is like this. That's the story you'll be unraveling with the secret objects. But I'll show you the first, the first sort of um, one of the easiest climbs, I guess, in the game. Okay. Can't help but have a little bit of uh, Zelda Wind Waker flashbacks boating mm -hmm. around a mm -hmm. <laughs> city here. There's, uh, you know, we we wear our influences pretty pretty clearly on our sleeve. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, Journey and Shadow of the Colossus influence in this as well. And um, yeah, there's some Zelda in here too. Now, if you're going to be influenced by anything, those three are not, not bad ones. Yeah. And so the second aspect is mostly the climbing, which is largely a, uh, it's like a, we call it a navigation puzzle. It's, it's about um, looking at a climb and assessing, you know, the correct path to get through it. Right. As I said, this is one of the simpler ones. So it's actually pretty easy. We're trying to ease you into it. Um, but the larger and larger buildings get more and more complex, and every building has some kind of unique aspect to it, so um, you're always rewarded with some different thing that you get to do. I really like the... Uh, I should say, this is literally my first time seeing the game, just as it probably is yours uh, watching, and I'm really, I really like the sort of contrast of the art style, where there's this sort of sunny, breezy palm trees 
up above, but then the further you get down, the more moss covered and mm -hmm. bleak everything gets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's uh, part of a post-apocalyptic setting is, is that sort of grungy detail. Um, and it's been a really interesting balancing act. I think Andrew's done a great job in making somewhere that, that fulfills that, you know, ruined city idea, but is actually still, you know, it's actually a pretty pleasant place. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're boating around. Oh, so this is one of the secret objects, and um, um, you've got a journal in which uh, all of Miku's memories, and so you can see how many of those you're going to have to fill in. And then in here is where you get all of the city memories. So that'll fill up as you progress through. So we're playing off of a, a Steam build, PC build. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is PC the only platform? No, we are going everywhere. It's uh, Excellent. PC, Xbox One, PS4, and mobile. More so, the merrier. So yeah, we, uh, we're uh, keen to go wherever the Unreal Engine goes. <laughs> Which um, is pretty much everywhere these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, you know, we're... we're Long in the tooth, sort of Unreal developers. We've been using it for well over 10 years, and uh, Unreal 4 has been really great to just very quickly get this game going. Yeah, fun fact you worked at uh, 2K Australia mm -hmm. on the XCOM first person shooter that never came out. Yes, the yes, one we that, did. That was a sort of. Um, I always thought, we've actually talked about this on Game Scoop and other various IGN podcasts and shows. It's, I always wanted that game to come out. Mm -hmm. It looked fantastic, and the sort of, it sort of had a. Bioshock meets X Files meets XCOM kind of vibe to it, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's uh it's, it's you know sadly it's, it's I guess it's sitting on a server somewhere. At, uh, <laughs> Somebody's got at, it. Two K, but um and I still think there are some great ideas in that game that uh, I'd love to maybe play around with again at some point in the future. But for now, for now, uh, onward and upward, yeah, literally. That's right. So you can sort of start to see the scope of this city too, as I'm looking around. Like yeah. you can see, there's and there's different areas. We've tried to differentiate so you can navigate more easily. Um, this is kind of a central business district. There's an industrial area, um, and there's more lower end buildings over mm -hmm. that way. Oh, that's where I just came from too. So it's kind of nice to be able to look back at, at where you were. Um, but this is what we're looking for. These are the crates that she's ah, been okay. uh, she's been using these parachutes to sort of guide her to find them. And so every time we get one of these. She'll find take what she finds in there and take it back and, and use whatever it is to, to help heal up Taku. We spent a lot of time on this water. <laughs> well, <laughs> I suppose, Making this water yeah, look as good as it can. <laughs> You're going to be spending a lot of time in and on it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So no dialogue in the game. Uh, there is some spoken is. word stuff, but it's it's um, it's a made-up language in right. the same way that uh, if you look at the the pictogram sequences, there's actually some written language in there as well, mm -hmm. and it's even in the subtitle of the the actual logo of the game. I wanted to make up just a, an Easter eggy sort of thing that people can maybe Decode. translate, yeah, yeah. If, if they feel like it. So each of these actually can be translated um, and uh, help you make more sense out of these. But even if you don't, by the end of the game, you should get a sense of the overall story anyway. Right. But yeah, it's it's fun making up, making these worlds, making up these fake worlds is one of the things I love about video games and making up a language and making up a, a background for these, these quasi Polynesian, uh, you know, islander characters. Um, you know, that's that's been a lot of fun too. And we were especially, you know, we we deliberately set out to not make a male Caucasian, you know, gunslinger. Same we, old, same old. Yeah, yeah. So you know, once you get once you can free yourself of that and you think, well, why not make it a young you know, girl instead who's not Caucasian, who could be any race, especially in a post-apocalyptic future, you don't know. Um, so um, from this point onwards, the game basically opens up and you're now, you're pretty much free to just go wherever the hell you want. So you're, you'll be, you're just off to look for clues and other bits of the story to piece mm -hmm. together? Mm -hmm. And you've now got the, uh, ah, no. it's okay. It's perfectly safe. None of these creatures can hurt you. They're just interesting. Um, there's other collectibles to find, like there's a there's a, a boat boost mechanic, which just lets you sort of boost your boat for a short period of time. And the, and the more of those you collect, obviously the longer that time goes for. There's landmarks, various uh, sort of like major landmarks that you can discover. Looks like we have we do have a map key there on oh the yeah. X button if we need it. Yep, and so we've got the fog of war there, so that, again, it's a navigation aid. So yeah, you can, it's a you sense of discovery, right? Yeah, but everything you discover with the telescope, the telescope is really useful but it's most useful from up high, so I might try and find actually uh, somewhere high to, to climb up. Let's go to that building. 
um, because everything you discover with the telescope gets marked on your map for you so you can go and find it later on. But yeah, you'll also notice these creatures are generally around. Something happened to this place and there's these strange mutated creatures, including dolphins that follow the boat. <laughs> And they're going to defy me, but oh, there you go. Oh, there they are. Okay. Yeah. Oh, don't hit the wall, oh. dolphin. I'm okay. He's okay. <laughs> He's fine. He's a dolphin. We'll go up to this one. Oh, yeah. This... So, yeah. As I was saying, the buildings vary in complexity. Um, and you can just do them in any order. So, I'm going to... Oh, what's that guy doing? So, if you look to your left there, there's one of the creatures. Oh, and you'll see more and more of these as the game progresses. Um, so and what that, we, with no combat, what do we do with these guys? Well, that's the, that's the thing. and They're part of that city story. They're part of that what happened here. Oh. Um, and you'll, you'll get some more information on that again as you pick up more and more of these things. Oh, and of course, we've got a full day-night cycle going, so... Yeah, look, the it, afternoon is late here. Yeah, and it looks really beautiful at night here. Let's see what I can see from up high. Hang on. When we took the game to PAX Oz, we had a, a really great response from um, basically people of all ages. It, it, it had an appeal that um, we, weren't, we weren't really expecting. Oh, there you go. I can discover that one. So later on I can go and get that. Got it. So, um, but it definitely had a casual appeal. Um, we had, yeah, I can we see had that. kids, kids all the way up to um, um, older people playing, and uh, you know that was that was a good indicator to us that we needed to make sure that it was a good casual sort of game. Yeah, it seems like I mean, if there's no combat and as you said, it's relaxed. I mean, this seems like it would be actually pretty fun on an iPad. Yeah, yeah. So um, the trick I think with the iPad one is. Um, getting a control scheme that's actually really suited to the device. So uh, with Epoch 1 and 2, our goal was to make the control scheme really suit the device. And we've always, you know, that's kind of a philosophy of ours, whatever platform we're on, make it absolutely the best controls that suit that device. And that right. was born out of looking at a lot of um, iOS games at the time, which have virtual joysticks or virtual buttons. And mm -hmm. I am not a fan of those things. I, I really don't think they have the same feedback and I so I don't think they're equivalent. So Epoch 1 and 2, you know, we had the whole touch and swipe control scheme which which worked really well. Um, I haven't seen a really great third person shooter uh, or third person control scheme except right. for maybe on one game called Lily which came out a little while ago. Um, so I was, I'm really looking forward to that challenge of actually making a really great third person control scheme for, for the iPad and we've already got it going. Um, you know, with some variations we're just trying out uh, just to make sure it's as intuitive as possible. Well, in the meantime, the good old gamepad or keyboard and mouse will... Well, that's right. So, it, obviously, it works. It's been developed on PC. It works perfectly well with, with um, WASD and, and a mouse control. Um, and we've, we've got the Xbox and PS4 versions running, so it works perfectly well with those controls as well. Ed, why do you think... It feels to me like uh, there's not a lot of Australian game development anymore. Or at least not a lot that we... It seems like, you know, the THQ shut down a studio and, what, um, Pandemic had a studio down there. And it seems like uh, Australian game development went through kind of a rough patch. I, I think you're correct in that there was, a, like, a really, really uh, big downtime and where everything was shrinking um, and the Aussie dollar got high and so there were some financial uh, reasons why... I think American developers in particular sort of fled Australia. Hmm. But with all of that said, we are fully in the renaissance now. There Excellent. are so many Australian developers over here at GDC this year. Um, so many working on really interesting new things. Um, the independent scene, uh, especially around Melbourne and Brisbane, is just ballooned uh, in the last couple of years and they're all doing really, really excellent stuff. So I think what you're seeing is that talent pool hasn't just, you know, withered and died. I think those guys have all... It was uh, it merely all, lay dormant. Yeah, or they've all gone on to, to, you know, go start their own studios and take their experience and try and do something new with it. So um, it's actually been really heartening. Uh, PAX Oz was, uh, in last year, was just terrific to see the sheer number of, um, of developers who were there. Excellent. Uh, the moon, the moonlit world here is really, really pretty. Yeah. Let's see if I can get up to. Also, it's a good thing those mutated guys are as scared of you as you are of them. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly it. 
They're like snakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's part of their behavior is actually part of the part of the puzzle too. You you kind of learn why they are the way they are, um, and they're not aggressive. You might almost feel like they're actually leading you through some of these things. Hmm. He says cryptically. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to save something for the game. Almost to the top. Yep, we're getting there. Is this the tallest building in the world? No. Uh, there's an achievement for getting to the to the uh, top of the world. I like um, that. This one is probably the third tallest, though. It's 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 pretty big. And you know, like you'll recognize bits and pieces of the architecture are actually from all over the world. Lots of different cities. Um, Andrew took. Uh, Influence from all kinds of architectural styles, but also just the landmarks themselves are. Mm -hmm. Some of them are from San Francisco. Some of them are from you know Brisbane in in Australia, and some of them from Canberra, where we like. There's a very famous tower in Canberra just there. But we just we wanted to just have like we didn't want it to be any particular city. We're not trying to say that this is any particular right. city, but we wanted to have like recognizable places for people to to mentally landmark their way through. So yeah, now I'm up here. I can get my telescope Some out. Scouting. Yeah, Let's see if I can find something. Hello, Mr. Whale. I'm right next to the beacon. I might just have to go and get that. Let's see. Let's check this crate. It's definitely a, a Zelda-ish moment <laughs> where you get the chest. Oh, yeah. It was, it was pop into the third-person camera to <laughs> open the chest <laughs> and see what's inside. <laughs> So you can see we start bringing those guys in more and more. Well, there was a bench over there she could have slept on. She's too exhausted. <laughs> too exhausted after climbing these buildings all day. Well, do you want to show us one more little sure, chunk, I'll, and then we'll wrap up? I'll tell you what, I'll do we some... We don't want to give away too much of the game No, that's for right. I'll, I'll do some boating around, and I'll just sort of uh, check out some of the landmarks Sounds and some of those, good. the smaller things. You're going to be okay, Taku. Uh, so where's the moon? Might be behind the building. There he is. So I'll go find one of the boat boosts actually, because they help you get around. Yeah. Being a designer, of course, I know where everything is. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, convenient. It's all in your brain. Yeah, yeah. I like the little compass up there. They're just little subtle aids for help you get to waypoints. Mm -hmm. Well, that's always helpful without having too intrusive of a HUD. Yeah, yeah, we, we we went back and forwards on a mini map for a little while. Um, we haven't actually implemented, it, but we did talk about it um, because it's the kind of thing. But you don't, you just don't want people playing the map. You want exactly. You want them to to actually really landmark this this place in their head, learn where everything is themselves. I'll try and get to uh, one of the. I won't climb it, but the tallest thing you can probably climb is that derelict crane over there. It's up high above there. Little dolphin buddies. Almost a little oddly poetic, all the strange mutant dolphins mm -hmm. following you. I'll take it out to, uh, let's go outside of the city. So collect 25 of those for a boat upgrade then? Well, each one of them you get just extends the life of this boost. Ah, okay. So now you've got it. You can just kind of scoot across the waters. I mean, that's partly partly because, you know, you recognize that after you do start knowing the layout of this place, you, you'll start wanting to go to places faster. Um, so the more of those you pick up, the, the faster you'll be able to get there. Oh, there's another bridge.
and there are more and more creatures that get introduced again as, as you progress. We've tried to bring the city to life as much as we can. And we have that linked into the story. Yeah, I like that. I'm curious to... Uh, will, will the uh, sort of pictogram cards explain, eventually sort of clue in as to what, what's going on with the creatures, the animals? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's kind of the origin story of this whole world. And it, uh, it fills in those blanks for you. Let's zoom over here. That's sort of terrifying. A <laughs> submerged bridge. <laughs> I'll go to this one. Very Golden Gate bridgey. It It is bridge-like. Golden Gate bridge-like. But there are these smaller buildings that are much simpler climbs. There's a lot of them dotted around as well. And this is where you'll generally find the secret objects. And we'll grab this one last object and yep. then leave everyone to purchase the game themselves. When are, when is uh, this game due out, Ed? Well, somewhere in the next two to four months. We're actually essentially feature complete on PC. Um, where by the time I get home uh, on Sunday, hopefully uh, the performance on the Xbox and PS4 will be up. So um, so vaguely we can sort of pencil in summer then. Yeah. Well, American summer. Yeah, You're yeah. heading back to yeah. Australia. Not Amer yeah, not Australian summer. Yeah, that's right. Northern Hemisphere summer. I yeah. shouldn't even say American. Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, that's right. That's another one of those. Yeah. So that's the basics of the game. Well, fantastic. The game is submerged. Fantastic looking. Uh, very compelling new adventure narrative open world exploration game. Ed, thanks so much for stopping by to show it off. No worries, and man. we'll keep an eye for it in the next uh, few months. Terrific. Thanks for For more us. on all things submerged and all of the latest, greatest, most innovative video games, you're already in the right place right here at IGN.